Hi, um, I think we've already been kind of in conversation <laughs> last couple of hours. So hopefully this is more a continuation. Uh, I don't think anyone can really think of predicting the future. So what I've tried to do is present some themes and topics that people are talking about and try and see, um, you know, if these are thought provoking and at least, you know, poses um, some suggestions and thoughts ahead. Uh, I found the quote there by uh, a fiction author, William Gibson, really interesting, which says the future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. I think in a country and a world where all kinds of things exist, from you know the most um, you know AI generated things to where people are still.
buzzword which everyone's talking about like deepa rightly said ai has always been there it's nothing that suddenly just crept up but when chat gpt happened it was like you know there is a before chat gpt and after chat gpt like it or not that's how it is and again to me the person i actually go to to learn from is my son these are the kids who are using who are doing their assignments using chat gpt plus claude and then using zero chat, zero gpt to understand how much of it is throwing up showing up as you know uh, ai and then using um, humanizing apps to kind of react rectify it and teachers are increasingly becoming smart to this and are giving them assignments which are thoughtful so i don't think it's all doom and gloom i think it'll just make us sharper and we will learn how to use this already the basics are there yeah people are using them for translations to create first drafts i think what really matters is that you recognize the limitations of these you know there are limitations because it's not fully accurate it just pulls out data and information at an astonishing speed it is not always accurate so i think our jobs for you know as media and journalists and people and content creators use these as well as as we use these within our teams will be to really fact check to really have rigorous rigorous mechanisms for that rigorous mechanisms on privacy i'm shocked when i hear about companies that are putting things as prompts on chat gpt or claude or any of perplexity the reality is all of the questions and prompts that you put becomes public information and that's at the most basic level there are tons of privacy and security concerns to be thought through so it's important that companies are recognizing it there are ethical thoughts to be put in you know there are you know it can be manipulated there are biases creeping in all of those issues would have to be dealt with and as companies and you know businesses all of these would become issues for how we are perceived how we are written about how we are thought about and how do customers or other stakeholders behave with us and so it's not just about oh coverage and writing about it it's a much larger bigger challenge and an opportunity which would need us to understand and by the way every single person in this room should be playing with every single ai tool out there because that's the only way we will both inform and learn about it the other thing um in my world will ai disrupt search the two pieces out there it, it, no one really knows so the two pieces i have are two contrary pieces of information the first graph actually shows how google is still faring way better in terms of unique visitors etc than ai uh, the other one's talking about how it's changing but the reality is ai is changing even at the most basic level of search we all know that when you do a search you you know google search shows up the ai summary in most cases on the right side i don't know if you all notice because that's where i go it shows up where it has picked up from i see that both because i use that sometimes to deep dive but also to show is my content showing up there as i write i'm increasingly looking at is it going into google discover is it going into the ai summary and i think that's going to become important um we talk about measurement a lot of times i mean i'm shocked but unfortunately uh, not surprised that people still talk of ave and in this day and age even saying things like you know when someone tells me that oh economic times got me a coverage i said unless you got a front page headline coverage you most likely it doesn't matter no one's really reading these i've actually now gone and asked for page views to mainline medias and i'm shocked that some stories they get less page views than my channel does so the reality is certain topics are being read a lot and certain topics are not and it's really important so that interesting blue diagram that shows you can't perhaps read it is that 800 articles were placed in a very large readership media and those squares represent the actual readership that each or each of those 800 pieces got so there are pieces which have big squares and then there are those tiny places and what the other one saying is that there are certain niche media which actually get better readership than the bigger media because of the kind of visitors and so on so it's becoming more and more important for us to be very precise this is from a company called memo which we work with to do some of these measurements so that's where i've got this from so i think it's also important to use data as an input not just as an 
output. I think it's really critical. Are we at regular times reiterating and looking at like what is the data showing? What is the perception needle? Who are we measuring? How are we measuring? Building loops and cycles around that and doing this as a long-term piece is really important for long-term perception management. Everyone talks about that. So yes, can we stop using thinking of PR as spin? And there is a whole bit of stuff around greenwashing and unauthentic. On the corner, right corner you see there is this handle which does these greenwashing memes. This one is for Shell, they have for a lot of other companies similarly. Um, you know, so there are questions being asked um, on the Hindenburg Adani issue. Um, no one really knows where the truth perhaps lies, but the reality is there are these issues which are dominating the headlines and they're all coming from all these questions around governance, around regulation, around sustainability. And these are going to get even more and more important as regulations like GDPR and similar GDPR type regulations coming up in Australia, coming up in India, coming up in many other countries will actually become even more dominating. Final point, yes argue and make sure that you have a seat at the table because there's no other function that looks at everything. If there's an HR issue, if there's an investor's issue, if there is a political, I thought the McDonald's letter after Trump when there was a fantastic PR effort to kind of balance it and give it out. So, you know, the open AI when Sam Altman was fired. I mean, there are a whole bunch of issues and really a good communicator or a PR person will be needed for each and every one of these issues. And yeah, it's global, whether it was the 2008 Lehman crisis, which there is enough data to show had it been better managed by central banks could have been, you know, it could have spared a lot of the kind of crazy viraling of that issue to of course the triple branding. And my final word, the chief of comms is always the CEO. From a Steve Jobs and Indra Nui to the recent Kunal Kamra and Ola controversy, it's always. So make sure you're working with the CEO and therefore you need a seat at the table. You cannot be reporting into marketing. You cannot be reporting into HR. If ever they're telling you that, are you doing that? Go have these conversations. Start it now. And that's really it. <laughs>